everyone and welcome to another episode of The Tetra Travels. This video is another that falls into my Spinal Sessions series where I interview people with various spinal cord injuries to discuss their life, what they're up to and hopefully inspire people out there with new spinal injuries about what they can do with their lives but also share awareness to the general public about what a spinal injury might entail but also how people who have a spinal injury that doesn't mean it's the end of their life. This week, I have my second guest, Mark Worth. I knew Mark would be a fascinating interview, not only because of his positive outlook on life, but also because his spinal cord injury, despite occurring in a very similar way to mine, actually came, ended up having very different outcomes. Mark has the ability to walk, but it doesn't necessarily mean that life is easy. I hope you enjoy his interview and it teaches you something along the way. Here in episode one, we have a discussion about how Mark's injury occurred and some of the challenges he faced in that first part of his early recovery. Hopefully you'll tune in for the whole of the interview, where I think there's some great things to learn. You obviously had a spinal injury. Um, what year was that spinal injury? Uh, so I was injured in 2001, September 1st. What age were you when that? Literally, I turned 18, sort of uh, two weeks before that. Okay, yeah, yeah. And what was your life like before the injury? Um, so before the injury, I was playing lots of lots of rugby, doing lots of um, sort of sporty stuff and lots of close family and stuff like that. I was doing well with my job. In theory, I was going to go off to the college that I, uh, off to Bicton College, like that year. Quite an interesting sort of life ahead of me. And uh, yeah all changed on that day and were you sort of sporty person was it just rugby no no pretty very very sporty doing lots of other stuff so playing football now and then uh, not for any teams but just having a bit of a laugh and doing stuff so it was quite quite good fun i mean that night we were meant to be um going around to the local uh our church minister's um, house to go watch the England Germany game. Which year was this again? You'll have to remind me what so game this that would is, be. So this is 2001, England versus Germany in Germany. 5 1, wasn't it? Yeah, it is that was. One? Yeah. I'm with you now. No, no, no that's fine. And I mean, th there's actually a point where I'm in the hospital, uh, down at Torbay Hospital, and you can just hear my uncle screaming out in the hallway and it's like what what's happened and like one of the nurses there just went oh um england have scored and went oh the score's three three nil or whatever and it's like what that that's not right <laughs> <laughs> do, you yeah. do you think you died that day when that happened no <laughs> not like really but it was just a bit <laughs> it was just a bit surreal so yeah so. <laughs> died and gone to heaven <laughs> um <laughs> So how were you actually injured, Mark? So I played hooker. I played across the whole front row all my life and um, was one of the more, I was getting a lot fitter as as time was going on, but I was playing hooker. Um, literally came on to the, came on in the second half, kicked off to us. One of the guys knocked it on and then we had a scrum. So literally going down for the scrum just as normal um, and as we engaged, rather than sort of my head slipping under the other hooker's shoulder, it kind of hit their shoulder. And instead of slipping down, it just slipped up. And obviously all the weight went through and just uh, dislocated my neck backwards. Also, because I had such a strong grip on the props, that kind of braced my fall a little bit. Mm. But yeah, it was, yeah, yeah, it was in a scrum. Was it like instant knowing, or what? Did you pass out, or were you, yeah, were you? So I was, I was conscious the whole way through. So instantly, could kind of tell something was wrong, just weird, and couldn't move or anything. Um, yeah. I do remember lying there on my back, and just thinking that my legs were still in the gra still in the air. Mm. Uh, so the position, obviously, I'd got into for the scrum. I still thought I was in that position and it wasn't until someone said, no, your legs are flat out on the ground. So it was, it was really surreal and weird. 
did an ambulance come to get you or was it an air ambulance? No, so an ambulance came. So an ambulance did come to get me. So uh, luckily there was a nurse on, on site that stabilised me. Then an ambulance came and picked me up. My auntie was there. So she came in with yeah. me in the uh, ambulance. And it was just it's like a weird sensation sort of because my hand obviously had been put onto my chest to just strap me in. And it just just couldn't feel it. Sort of knew it was there, but couldn't really feel it. So um, yeah, so then took the ambulance all the way from Brixham to Tor Bay, which is about 10, 15 miles. So it's not too bad. But they literally went about 30 miles an hour the whole way because they just yeah. didn't want to risk going any faster or anything. So it was just really surreal sort of thing. And what was your journey through hospital like? Were you in Torbay for long or did you move hospitals? So I went into Torbay straight away and obviously got some very basic sort of things done, catheterized and just a few x-rays and stuff. And then pretty much it was like, right, we're going to send you down to uh, Dereford in Plymouth uh, as we need to send you to one of the specialists. Um, so literally they drove me down to Dereford there and then and went there and had lots of lots of x-rays and MRIs and all of that to see what was going on um, and basically spent the first week in a high dependency ward uh, with traction traction on my head it was it was very very weird sort of thing obviously having two sort of bolts drilled into your head to put the weight through your neck is a is a really weird feeling and i mean i had i had the the spots where it it was drilled in for quite a long time but just a very weird sort of thing to have that happen i had a pressure sore as well from where i'd fallen down i had landed on my own boot and it was right in the top top crack of my bum it healed over but it's obviously because of where it was it was always a small bit of skin so uh, they were constantly worried about pressure sores so it was put on i think it was a stoke mandeville bed one of the ones that you can tilt either way so did you stay in derriford for long or did you then go to a spano unit so i stayed in derriford for about a month six weeks so i was down in derriford quite quite a while um luckily there was a a nurse there that not a nurse a physio that had been through all of this with another patient she was like fully up for trying to get me up and about up and about as quick she as quick she could so the first week traction after that first week um basically they gave me uh, two choices one was okay we can do the surgery get it all sorted and it's all done and dusted or the other option is we'll put you in a halo um, and let it heal naturally. Now, if we put you in a halo and it doesn't heal in the correct way, you're going to have to have the surgery. But that does mean that we will have to break your neck to re- fix your neck. And because I had turned 18, that was it. It was your it was your choice. You had to make the decision. So it was a really scary sort of thing to go, right, I've got to make a decision that could affect my life forever. And just all, all those thoughts run through your head of it's, this is major surgery. What What's going to happen? How How's things going to happen? Uh, could I die on the operating table and stuff like that? And it, it really did scare me quite, quite a lot. Mm-hmm. But I did kind of come to the conclusion that it's like, well, is either having surgery now or waiting six months and having mm-hmm. surgery potentially in six months time? Whereas if I have it done now, actually, I can just get on with the rehab. So that's what we did. And um, yeah, I still remember going down to the operating theatre, getting in there. And while I was in there, they went, oh, he's a bit too long for the bed. (laughs) So like they were fiddling around with me on the bed. And then they were like, right, let's just stop. Take him back. We'll sort it all out. Get a new bed that's long enough and get it all done correctly. Which is just it's just weird, and it? like to be uh, there, and they're talking about all that sort of stuff. Yeah, they couldn't have done your nerves any good. No, so you have the operation, come through it quite, 
quite well. And the the surgeon uh, came in and saw me while I was on on HDU. You obviously had the breathing apparatus in and everything, so I couldn't talk. Um, had little sensation in my like toes, and he he was like, "Can you can you feel me touching your left big toe?" And I was like, mm. sort of said, "Oh yeah," only to find out that he had actually touched my right toe. <laughs> if you see what I mean, he was touching my right yeah. toe obviously it was left to him so i kind of went uh, and then i'm like i couldn't i couldn't say it you you're touching the wrong foot mate but i just still like still like went for it and went uh, uh, sort of thing <laughs> yeah, so i was quite quite lucky he was like yep no that's brilliant so i've not damaged you any further but then it was like right well we need to try and get you into a rehab center we'll try and find one and basically uh the options were salisbury or cardiff and um, so Salisbury and Cardiff, very similar distance from Torbay. Salisbury had MRSA, so they couldn't potentially take me because they wanted to clear that up. But I have got relatives that live in Wales. So it was like, well, actually, Wales might be better. Let's ju- just go with Wales. And in a way, it was so much better to go to Wales because it's yeah. such a direct route. That'll be it for this episode. Please remember to like, share and subscribe uh, for more of this content. Also, if you liked this, please go back and check out the interview I did with Ross Morrison, a Paralympian um, playing wheelchair rugby. And also look out for the rest of the Mark interview. They'll be loading up on Mondays and Thursdays. So yeah, please look out for those and like, share and subscribe. See you next time.